believe in brothers and sisters. Are you hearing me? Yeah. All right. <laughs> so it's, it's always, again, uh, a blessing to be used by God, you know, because it is God in himself that breathed breath into man, and the Bible said men became a living soul. So it's always a blessing, you know, to be used by the Creator of this universe. You know, let us pray before I go any further. Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your that you're the sovereign God, that in you all things is consist, and that nothing can happen without your permission. And Lord, we thank you that you're, you're the God that sustained the world from ever since creation up until this day. And Lord, we thank you for just the privilege just to breathe in your presence. But Lord, we thank you more for the fact that that even though one day before Adam sinned, we, we were so far away from you. But because of what Christ Jesus did on Calvary Cross, your word says, disobedience of one man, many were made sinners. But Lord, your word says, because of obedience of one man, many can be made righteous. And Lord, I'm grateful for that, you know, because when you see me, you don't see a sinner, a wretched man, but you see your son. And Lord, I'm grateful for that. And I know other believers can testify of your goodness. So Lord, I thank you again. And I pray that you can really keep on my heart as you use me. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You know, the theme of this, this year conference is Let Us Rise Up and Build. But tonight, I want to talk to you about keeping the course and staying faithful in our times. Keeping the course and staying faithful in our times. You know, one of the hardest thing is remaining faithful to God, even in the midst of hardships. And many believers can testify of that. One of the hardest things for anyone that follow Christ is staying faithful to the Lord during the midst of hardships. It is pretty easy for us to follow or be committed to the things of God when we are not being persecuted or being afflicted by God. So many times we make commitments to the Lord with an, on a period of our time of hardships we wave on that commitment. God's will is that we remain faithful despite of a certain situation or the circumstances. You see, there's a man in the, in, in the Bible, Apostle Peter. He swore to Jesus Christ that he will follow him until death. Peter said to Christ that when all his disciples forsaken him, he would stay and be faithful. But once he saw the agony that Christ was going to face, Peter backed out. Peter realized that he never wanted nothing to do with that. So he backed out. You know, and it's not for us to bash the Apostle Peter, which is to realize that the same thing do happen to us as believers today. That we make commitment to the Lord, but as we see the true cost of following the Lord, we sometimes back to our wave on the commitment. Sometimes in life we make commitment and end up breaking them. We often make commitment based on our moods, our current situation. We can think of people who vow until death do us part, but in the marriage, during hardships, they want to be out. You know, we are very emotional beings. And we can make commitment based on the situation. But our commitment should always be conscious. Any commitment that you and I make, but always to be made, make sure that we are conscious. And so I believe the Lord encourages us that we should not be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. Because the Spirit of the living God empowers us to be conscious at all times. You know, being faithful to God is not easy. And Paul 
himself, the Apostle Paul, we see that in his life. That Paul was always faithful to the Lord. You know, in 1 Corinthians, the passage that we read earlier, 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 2, it says, Moreover, it is required in a steward that a man be found faithful. One of the biggest truths I have ever heard is that we have to meet God on a mountain top, but we only get to truly know Him deep down in the valley. We have to meet God on a mountain top, but we only truly get to know Him deep down in the valley. I you know David spoke about this in Psalm 23. He says in verse 4, He said, Yea, though I walk through the valley at the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You know, in the midst of hardships, that's when we should truly get to know the Lord. Sometimes, as believers, we, we don't, we are so afraid of hardships. But it's the hardships that we truly get to know God and know the faithfulness of God. And David says, again, he says, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff comfort me. And it's in the hardships we realize that God is a God of comfort. And there's no questioning about that, that God is a God of comfort. Because once you're a child of God, God will always come to your rescue. We start off enjoying salvation, but in the midst of suffering, we get to a point where we just despise God, our life itself. Again, we can make commitment based off of our situation, our current feeling. This is why I believe happiness is temporal, and God speaks about the joy of the Lord. Because happiness is always based on a situation, and we can make commitment based on that happy moment. And, and, and oftentimes we people get into marriage vowing on the day that when they get married that they're until death do a spot, but in the midst of the hardships they want to be home. You know, I want to share something really personal, but before I do this, I want us to understand these these two verses. In Psalm 119 and verse 71 and 72, it says, It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I may learn thy statutes. Verse 72 said, The law of thy, the law of thy mouth is better unto me than thousands of, sil of gold and silver. The psalmist wants us to understand that it was good for him to be to face hardships. It was good for him to be afflicted. Because it's in that time when he faced hardships, he learned the, the truth about God, the statute about the word of God, because the statutes speak about the word of God. When, 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 when we're in hardships, we're either faced with the time wanting to, 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 to get deep down in the word to find comfort from God. When I, I can testify of that because when I am struggling with depression or anxiety, this is, this is a time when I get to dig deep down in the world and find comfort. And that's what, Paul, that's what the psalmist is saying. It was good for me to be afflicted that I may learn the statutes of the Lord. Because when, when all things seem to be going well, we don't really dig in the scriptures. And sometimes, the only way we get to truly know God is when we, we box our against the wall and we realize that we don't have any way out. So many people are willing to, to denounce God, but on their deathbed, that's where they call to the Lord. But, but as God's people, we have to re remember that. Ver 72, the verse of 72 says, The law of thy mouth is better unto me than thousands of gold and silver. Because during the midst of hardships, when you find the comfort of God, and I can testify of that, that when, when you have that experience with God, when God revealed himself to you in his word, it's like you don't want to share that for nothing in this world. Because we find out that the living God come and comfort us. And that is not, nothing is more comforting than that. 
So many times people can speak so many comfortable words to us, but no one can comfort us like the God of heaven. During hard times, we get to anchor our feet in the Lord. It is during our suffering, it is, it is during suffering times, we see the power of the Lord manifest. God, you know, God has a way of sustaining us and proving to us that He's more than capable to keep us. You know, someone I know said it is affliction that paved the road. Because it's, it's, it's during afflictions or hard times that we stay close to the Lord. And everything seems to be going well, we don't remember God most times. But when hard times come, we want to cling to the Lord. Everything that we ever face or go through, there is always a wisdom of trial. Wisdom in the midst of trial. And God always, every artist that we face as a church or an individual, God always has lived some level of wisdom that He wants to teach us individually or collectively. Because the Bible does speak about the wisdom of God surpassing the other understanding of men. But sometimes we fail to learn like the children of Israel. And sometimes God has to take us on a 40 year journey. Because the lesson that God is trying to teach us at the moment, we don't seem to get it at the moment. You know, during last year, I realized that I was bitter towards this whole church thing. I was bitter towards the whole church thing. I developed a level of bitterness because of what has been, been done to me by various group of people in the church. And, I, and, I, and, I, and at that time, I was just so bitter. And as a young believer, I started to ask the Lord a lot of questions, you know, because, you know, as a young believer, I was like, Lord, why this is happening to me? Why is this happening to me? I was hurt so badly, and to be honest, when I was attending counseling, I told my counselor simply that I wanted to quit this whole church thing, just turn my back. Turn my back on this whole church thing. And my counselor asked me what I think about the church. I'm not talking about our church only, I'm talking about in general. A counselor asked me one simple question, what I think about the church, and I tell her that the whole church thing is just a joke. Because in my head, I think that when I read the Bible, and see how God threw out his word in the, in, in his, in, in the Bible. I said to myself then, it, it seems like we're not living the Bible. You know, I, I just said to her, I believe this whole church is just a joke. You know, I was put down by various men and I, and I, I could just, just feel the bitterness in my heart. And people would reach out to me and I tell them that I'm not interested to partake of various things and just shut myself out from other people. And that's the time people say to me often time, you seem to be growing, you seem to this, you seem to be that. But I know deep down I was seemed like I was crumbling at that time and I could just feel like depression was going to eat me alive. It's that time when I realize that oftentimes when I face difficulties is the time when I realize that God is real. Because so many times we can say God is real, but we don't really have an account encounter with the living God. Sometimes we can live off other people's testimony, but God wants us, as Brother Owls always, always say, we must prove God for our own self. God is a God of comfort, and I can testify of that. You know, during, during that time when I was bitter, I started to seek help apart from getting counseling. I started to listen to various sermons. I was kind of frustrated and I was asking God. At that time, I was listening to a sermon by Dr. Charles Stanley about how to deal with anger. And I was asking God, what am I really angry with? And I was angry. The Holy Spirit said to me, I was angry with God. 
Because I was angry with God because I believe God should have been held accountable for putting me in this situation as a young believer. And I, and, and I often say this, and I know this is a truth to an extent, that sometimes we, 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 we blame the devil for so many things. But I believe in the church today, that as we're speaking about rising up and build, in the church today is that the biggest threat for a newborn Christian is a carnal Christian. We often time blame the devil for various things, but I believe the biggest threat for a carnal Christian, a, a young believer, is, is carnal Christian. And often time we believe that we just do so many things that we say we are not perfect, we are not this, we are not that, to live any and any hope. In the midst of everything I wanted to give up. Again, I just wanted to turn my back on this whole church thing, you know. In that time, I believe that this whole church thing has failed me and because when I got saved, coming out of a life of crime, I think that the church would have been a better place for me. And at that time, I felt like, whoa, this church thing just failed me, and this is just a waste of my time, and the best thing I can do is just turn my back. But I remember seeing this post, it says, it is foolish to be disloyal to a loyal God because of people. And I was remember that it is people that hurt me and not God. And now that this, I believe God was trying to get me back to my calling. You know, when God called me to, to ministry, these three verses God used me to call me. And I reflect on them and I realize that there was a midst, a wisdom, in the midst of my trial, there was wisdom to be learned. And God bring me back to my calling. It's in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. It says, Though therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Verse 4 says, No man that warreth entangled himself with affairs of this life, that he may please him who had chosen to be a soldier. And verse 10 spoke to me that night. It was in 2017 when God called me to study for ministry. Verse 10 says, Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain salvation, which is in Christ Jesus, with, with, with eternal glory. Anyway, and, and, and that verse spoke to me is that, God seemed to call me to, to reach men for his kingdom. And, and I was faced in that time if I'm going to give up my calling because of what man did to me. And if I'm going to endure for the sake of God. Yeah. So others can have salvation. Yeah. And God wants us to, 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 to despite of the difficulties we face with believers. Because sometimes there are believers that are very carnal. And they will just do any and anything and don't care how it impacts you. And I, and I, and I experienced that. And sometimes I just pray and ask God to protect young believers. No? Because sometimes we, we don't realize that our actions, we say no, we're not, we're not, we are not perfect. I do believe that. But sometimes we use that way as a license to do what we want to do. Many times in that time, I've reminded myself it was God saved me and not man. Because if I, I faced with this challenge. You see, if it was, if I came to church because of man, I would have been through the door already. We can't look to man for encouragement. Sometimes, I believe us can testify of various things that they go through, and sometimes the hardship want us to crumble. I turn our backs on God. But I want to remind us this morning, that this evening rather, that God is faithful. Amen. Amen. And the faithfulness of God is, does not depend on who, who we are and what we do for God. God is always faithful despite of who we are. And you know, tonight, God wants us to remind that we need to keep the course in our times I remain faithful because when we stand before God it, 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 would, it won't be because of what people do to you make you turn your back on God you will have to give a personal accountability to God for your own actions sometimes we quit on God and quit on people but I want to say this tonight 
don't quit on God despite of what you're going through. You know, and I was preparing, I believe God led me to. Sorry, I want to bike pass. I was preparing, I believe God led me to encourage Abigail. And, and I just want to say this to Abigail as you're going away to study, away from your family, I know it can be discouraging, hard. <coughs> And, and, and maybe you have a lot of fears that grip you. But always remember that God won't leave you where His grace can protect you. God won't leave any, any one of His children where His grace can protect, protect us. And you know, sometimes, since we have a year, sometimes God has some things that He wants us to learn on our own. And by some people being in our circle, they probably can't shelter us too much. But I've learned that. I'm not saying our parents are sheltering them, by the way. I'm just saying that sometimes God wants us to, to, to learn that He can prove, him, prove Himself for us without other, other people being in our circle. Because as, child, as, as, as God's children, God have always has things for us to learn. And all of us one day have to stand up on our foot and make a decision for ourselves. And it's, and it's the, the faithfulness, the past faithfulness of God will help you to, to, to stand up and make good decisions. Even it means that you might, you might go against what society teaches. Because I believe that it's coming a time where we will have to stand up for our faith and proudly they know the teaching of this world just for the sake of Christ. I want to remind that to remind all of us that trust God. Just it doesn't matter why various uncertainties that lie ahead. Trust God. Trust God. God is always certain, even though life seems to be uncertain. We have to sing that song that, that, that because in live, we can face tomorrow. It's not only tomorrow we can face when we, when we know that we have a sovereign God. We can face tomorrow and for, forever once we know that God is with us. And as we focus tonight as, on being built up for the Lord and being faithful in the midst of trial, discouragement will come. But I want to say this to all of us tonight. Ephesians 6 verse 10 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And in our ships, we will learn that we can't stand on our own two foot. I forget which writer said this, but he said, Not by might, nor by power, but by the Spirit of the Living God. Because it's the Spirit of the Living God that enables us to face difficulties and move forward. It does not matter what we face, God is always above and beyond all of our circumstances. Though things may make you and I crumble, God can't crumble. The Bible says that he that watcheth Israel neither sleep or slumber. It's the same for us today as God's children. God will keep us even when our eyes are closed. And as the Hebrew writer put it, God is the true anchor for our souls. And we should learn that we must cling to God more than all cling to anything else. Because we see in the life of Job where he lost everything. And it's, it's in, in the life of Job we see where the importance of clinging to God more than anything else. Mankind is temporal. Things are temporal. But God is always eternal. 
when everything seems to go on the journey, God is eternal, God can sustain you. If we crumble, God can rise us, us back on our feet and make us know that it wasn't our own strength that did that. It was just God did that. Because sometimes people who seem to have it all doesn't know that God is just so sustaining God. They, they can eat right back on and because they think that they have money can put them back on their feet. They think that it was me that put myself back on my feet. It was hard because of the grace of God. And if breath don't leave our body, it simply means that God is not yet over with us. And just before I close, I just want to look at this passage. I'm skim through this passage. Well, I don't want to go over time tonight. <laughs> Philippians 1 and verse 20 to 24 it says, And this is this Paul, the Apostle Paul. He said, according to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or death. You know, in Corinthians, the Bible has to speak about him getting a thorn in the flesh. And I can identify where, where Paul says, whether it be by life or by death. Because Paul knew that it was the grace of God that sustained him to carry on the work of the Lord. Nothing, none of us can sustain us. Because I remember once when I, I remember, I, I got, I remember the first time I got gasping. It was the hardest thing I ever feel. But Paul here is saying, whether it be by life or by death, Christ shall be magnified in his body. And it's the same force. We should use our body for the glory of God. So many times we use our body to glorify other things in this world. It is temporal. But God wants us to realize the importance. As getting involved in the things which are eternal. As I said, Sunday night, sometimes the Bible does speak about God's grace is free. But when we stand before God one day, God's rewards won't be free. And that's the reality. Paul said in verse 21, he says, For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. How many of us can say tonight for me to live is Christ? Sometimes, again, we can make commitment that says for me to live is Christ. But if you're not living totally solo to the things of Christ, you can't truly live for Christ. You know, and, 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 and the last part of the verse and to die is gain. Because we know that as God's children that when we die, it's like a graduation to be with the Lord. Because it's, 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 at, it's at that final link. We will face no more suffering, no more pain. Just to be with the Lord forever. And Corinthians put it like this. There are very few, few verses in the Bible that keep me excited about the things of God. Corinthians put it like this. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9 says, But as it is written, I have not seen, not ears heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Because God wants us to keep excited about him, you know. God have some reward that only the faithful people of God will get. Amen. Again, God's grace is free, but his reward are not. And here in verse 22, we can see the suffering of Paul. He says, 
But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what I shall do, yet what I shall choose, I want not. For I am, verse 23 says, For I am in a straight bitted stool, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. You know, I hear Paul was in a tug on war, wanting to, to be with the Lord, and wanting to be here. Paul was in that tug on war, wanting to be with the Lord, wanting to be here. And the here that Paul wanted, wanting to be, it wasn't for the sake of the worldliness, but to be used by God. And the one that Paul wanted to be with Christ is what the fact that he will enjoy eternity with, 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 with God Himself. But Paul said to the church of Philippi in verse 24, which is very important. Even though Paul was going through some hard times, he was incarcerated at that time. And I'm saying to you again, sometimes we, we, we go through some hardships that sometimes <coughs> death seem to be easier than life. And that's what Paul was going through, you know. Sometimes death can be seen to be easier than life. And there's many times I feel like, you know, God, I feel very stuff. I say, God, today we don't be a better day if you take me, you know, because... When I see, when I first time I came across these verses, I understand why Paul wanted to be with the Lord. Because sometimes when life gets so hard, death seems to be more easier. But Paul said in the last 24 verse, he says, Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. Paul said the reward of being here for the, to the church of Philippi to encourage them in the Lord, to keep them built up, to move forward in the Lord, the work of the Lord. And I'm saying to you again that if breath don't leave your body, it seems to me that God is not done or true with you yet, despite of your circumstances, where you are. Paul knew, knew that God's purpose was not done or true with him yet. And it doesn't matter how old we are tonight. God's purpose is never true with us yet. One spirit is in our body. So let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word. And we thank you for your encouraging <coughs> God that you are. Lord, we see in your word where it says, You're the God of all comfort. And Lord, I just want to take time out to pray for any one of my brothers or sisters that might be feeling discouraging right now, that might be going through any depression, any hardships, that even facing some level of uncertainties about the coming semester. Lord, I pray that they trust you, knowing that you're faithful, and that you will see them through once it is their will. Because, Lord, once you open a door for your children, you will always make a provision. And you will always sustain them. So Lord, I pray that as your children, we will learn the importance to learn to trust you because you are your God that can be trusted. Lord, you have, been ex you, have, you have came into being before anything else. And you are smarter than any one of us. And Lord, if we see in your world, we will see that you can be trusted. But sometimes we fail to trust you because of circumstances that might seem to get in us to crumble. But Lord, may we remember that hardships is for a reason. And though we may meet you on the mountain, we will prove it for yourself in the valley, like David. And Lord, may we find encouragement in your word. And just pray out to you. Knowing that prayer is not we getting us what we want you to do. But prayer is us getting you to help us through what you want us to do here on earth. So Lord, I pray that you remain faithful. Even in hard times. I pray that you help us to, to take the long road with you. 
even if it means to meet learn patience. Help us not to cut corners. But Lord, I pray that you will be done. In Jesus' name. Amen.